Welcome back to another episode of Chat with the Artist. We're stoked to be joined by Lou Tanis, vocalist of the band Altars of Arwan. Lou has been a part of the deathcore wave that has carried over to this day and is a monster behind the mic. We chat about past projects, the changes in the industry, the scene itself, some life-changing events, and about his new endeavors. What's up, Lou? What's up, man? Not much. It's been a long time since it's been a uh, long time. We've we've had a chat. It's gonna be what? Uh thirteen years? Something like that. <laughs> it's it's been a minute. I'm super stoked that you're here, dude. Um it's Appreciate like it. we said, it's it's been a while. Uh we're really uh appreciative that you're uh giving us a little bit to to shoot some shit with. Uh how you been, man? Uh it's been a wild black last decade at least, man. I uh I just did a podcast recently and I was kind of like backtracking over the years, but, um, I got into that really bad car accident back home. And then after that, I was just like, man, it's time for me to get my shit together and get out of this state. Cause I was kind of going nowhere, you know? And, uh, I moved out to the West coast. I was in St. George for a couple of years. And then I ended up getting a really bad motorcycle accident, which I had to move down to Vegas for, cause all my doctors were down here. So I got tagged on the highway at 70 on my Harley 2017, 18 new years. And, uh, it snapped my hips in half and it crushed my spine. So I was in the hospital for a month. I was in a wheelchair for six months and I'm still dealing with the injuries almost six years later, just getting through day to day life. That's wild. Yeah. So, um, I've been out here about five years now going on six years and, uh, I ended up catching up with everybody, Nick Arthur from Molotov, Ricky from suffocate, like all my old friends from when I was touring and stuff. And, those two guys and my wife were like the main reasons that I got back into music. Cause everybody's like, dude, what are you waiting for? Why aren't you getting in a band? I'm like, I don't know, man, I'm too old for that shit now, you know? And, uh, Nick got me two auditions, uh, with two different bands and it just, it didn't work out, which was cool. It was good to get back in the studio. And then, um, BJ Sampson, I don't know if you know who he is, but he like him and Dan Watson started enterprise earth. So BJ wrote like the first four albums of theirs and like that was his band. And then he passed it on, you know, Gabe took over and they are where they are now, but he is the like backbone of this band. He does all the music, you know, I do the vocals, the lyrics, all that stuff, but musically the band is BJ and I, that's it. And uh, it's been doing really well, man. We haven't even been a band less than six months and it's already getting a lot of buzz and it's starting to go places. So we got some big news coming up on October. And it's gonna go from there. That's sick, dude. Yeah, you guys slap. You guys, you guys are hard. <laughs> it's like I'm, uh, I'm really enjoying it. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm loving, I'm loving watching your studio updates and stuff. Uh, it's just cool because, like, it has been so long. It's just mm-hmm. cool to see you back at it because, like, like they were saying, like fuck you waiting for man (laughs) (laughs) it's been a long time dude and like getting back into it and like when i was touring i mean i'm 37 now when i was on tour i was 22 years old you know and like you either had it back then or you didn't and now there's like techniques for people to learn like we had none of this stuff the old like death core regime death metal regime like we didn't know any of this stuff we just did it and if it sounded good then we got no band you know what i mean yeah and now like taking the techniques they got now and like honing it in on what I already did has elevated me tenfold from where I was. It's just crazy. Like how it's like, there's a science to it now. It's crazy how far it's come too. because when I first heard your vocals, I'm pretty sure you were in on paths of torment. Uh, yeah. And then you did some stuff with ion and yep. then conducting from the grave was, yep. you know, that was an awesome band. And then you had a stint, with uh, what through the eyes of the dead you did New England Metal Hardcore Fest. So 2008, I did two tours for them. I filled in. Um, it came down to me and Nate for the final, and they took Nate. Nate did the album, did the big tours, and then Nate left. So they called me, and I did Throwdown Soilwork tour with them, and then I did First Blood for the Fallen Dreams. Uh, there was one other band on that tour, War of Ages, I think, and then we did. Main stage New England Hardcore Metal Fest on that. Yeah, that was, uh, I grew up watching those videos, man. You know, if you're from New England, like, that's like the, that's the pinnacle kind of to reach out there, you know? 
And uh, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. Like, I remember being backstage doing my mic check, and I heard the crowd go, like, crazy with it. And I'm like, this is going to be nuts. But, like, we couldn't see anything. And then as soon as the curtains opened, we opened up with two inches from the main artery, and the place just exploded. I don't think I was there that year. If you were into music and you were from New England, that's where you should have been. Yeah. So, and yeah, you said it is the pinnacle. My, I've never had a band that that's played it. I've had some friends, obviously yourself and, and some other people that have played it. And it's like, it's kind of like that. Uh, if you get a spot on warp tour, you know, yeah. it's, it's that even if it's just Hartford or, or Boston and those two dates and you were from new England, that yeah. was like, in my mind, the equivalency of a uh, new England metal hardcore fest. And I'm glad it's coming back. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's making a comeback for sure. Um, Phil gave me a chance that year, I think it was 2010, to get up on stage with him and do Possession. And uh, that was wild, man. I walked off of that. I think it was Mayhem Fest. Uh, Warped Tour. It was, Warped Tour. Uh, it, it was Warped Tour. We were talking about this the other day. Uh, yep. It was Warp Tour, and I believe it was like, it was 2010, and it was in Hartford. Because at the time, I believe you were in my band. Yeah. And we were there because you were like, yo, I'm going to definitely play a song today. And we were like right over there, right on the side and just being like, yo, that's, that's pretty rad that he's up there. It's got to be a huge fucking moment. Yeah, it was for sure. Like, there's a lot of vocalists that I look up to that like I've been friends with forever. You know, like I've known those guys for a long time. Uh, Suicide Silence, man. I got, to, I got to be on the Dead Walk with Mitch, which that's immortalized forever on that track. And I'm really grateful I got that experience. But like, I've known Vincent and those guys from the Acacia Strings since I was like a teenager. And uh, on Passive Tournament, we played shows with them in Mass and you know all over the place. And we came up together. And Vincent had given me that opportunity to be on the Dead Walk. And I'm really grateful for that because Mitch and I became friends from that point on. And he's like one of the nicest, like down to earth, solid dudes. You know, I miss him a lot, especially lately. It's been a long time. And time just keeps cruising, man. But like <laughs> being able to be like in that time of the music. It, even if it was like my small part in it, like I was still there for it. And like, I'm really, I'm really grateful. I got that experience. Yeah. You're definitely a, a part of that experience. Any, any of anybody that was involved in it, like, even if, even if you had the smallest slice of the pie, you know, you were in a band that only played in Connecticut and mass, so you didn't get out and do anything and, and expand and, and start touring. You were still, if you were in that, that time window of all these bands coming up, even if you were on a couple shows with these bands, like you were a part yep. of that whole thing. I'm blown away recently, man. Like I looked at uh, conducting Spotify and we're getting like 9,400 listeners a month still, you know, and like when Bludgeons Become Dust albums on there and then the two that Mikey did. And I, like, I'm still blown away. There's that many thousands of people that still listen to the band every single month. Oh yeah. Always a, always a topic when we go back. And uh, and talk about bands, especially since all three of us are from, you know, that area. We uh, you always go back, and it's like, oh, that conducting album was <laughs> the shit, dude. Bro, but, I hate like, true fucking story. Looking back on it, I'm just like, man, I'm so beyond that point that like I just take it for what it is. I we did the album, and I never thought it had the reach it did. And like, I've met a lot of people recently, you know, that are that are big big names in the scene now they're like dude that conducting album you did like it's legendary to me and i'm like what the fuck like i i'm just blown away by that and it's really yeah. cool that something i did just by chance and had an opportunity to do means that much to people i'm probably one of those listeners that you see on that statistic so yeah. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> i know there's quite a few other people that i know that always talk about stuff like that when we go back like i said when we go back to records like that we're like oh man but you know music is still awesome but that was that was the time and i guess uh y'all had to be there yeah yeah but like this whole thing now too man it's crazy because like these new kids are doing a whole different level of stuff and it's uh i'm blown away by it man like the, the techniques of people and like now there's two different kinds of vocals like i still do false chords it's all projection it's all power like i've never done the fry the fry technique and uh there's people that can do both and can like interchange between them like smoothly. It's pretty rad to see like where everybody's at nowadays for vocals. Yeah. Honestly, like the caliber of vocalists now are kind of like insane. It's involved. 
it's evolved so fucking much because it's like you had like your sound like the lower guttural stuff and then you had like what mitch was doing back in the day but now like especially with like will ramos coming out with like the crazy shit he's doing and adding a whole other flavor to it it's crazy to see that like even after all these years we thought at one point there's no way music can get like any more fucking intense. And then they come along and it's like, okay, well, I guess we got to keep pushing this fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's just crazy because man, cattle decapitation, that dude's been doing these vocals for years. And it's cool to hear like the kids that are inspired by that and did get that from him are like passing it on to everybody else. Like, Hey, this isn't me. I got this inspiration from this dude who's been doing it forever. I mean, cattle decap's been a band for what? 20 something years. Yeah. You know, and yeah. he's like one of the, like the the godfathers of that style of vocals, you know, like I come from a different generation. So like a lot of the my role models for vocals were like Cannibal Corpse, Morbid Angel, Behemoths, uh, Gore Guts, Deicide. Like if you listen to those old bands, you'll hear a lot of that influence in my voice. But like that's what I came up on, you know, and you got this whole new generation coming up on the Lorna Shores and the, the Signs of the Swarm and all the bands that are out there right now. Mm, yeah, I just saw Signs of Swarm in a, what was it, uh, Baltimore Soundstage with Arch Spire and Whitechapel. That was a great fucking gig. That's awesome. There's a lot of good, there's a huge scene out here in Vegas, and uh, it's really cool to see it. But it's like, I just feel old going to shows now, man. I, you know, I just turned 37 <laughs> to end of last month, and I'm just like 15, 16 years flew by really quick. I hear that I'm 36 next month, so I'm right there with you, dude. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah, right there. And it's funny, like I'm trying to. I posted a picture messing around because, like, Nick and Ricky are really good friends of mine. Like, even now, like, I'll write a song and I'll send it to him. Be like, hey, man, I need you guys' honest opinion. Like, those guys are some of my closest friends and, and and some of my biggest advocates for like being back and doing music again and like, um just sitting back and laughing like i put a picture together of like us like years ago and us now and i said we should do a tour called nothing but gains because everybody got jacked <laughs> yeah you guys yeah. all did yeah <laughs> yeah everybody got like way worked out and huge and it's just funny but i think it'd be cool we're planning on touring man i like everything's in the works october is going to be a big announcement for a lot of stuff and then uh from there it's just going to be a push i'm pumped for it Fuck yeah. It, it, it's, it's crazy to like see all this come to life when this was just like an idea of mine and BJ's. And then I sat down, I came up with the name and like the theme of it, um, going with like the old Celtic God stuff and, and, uh, kind of mixing that into the lyrics and like, you know, making it relative to stuff in my life and then bringing it to life now. And like people are fun. Like it's, it blows me away, man, because I don't, I just see what I do as what I do, you know, and the fact that people even listen, it just blows me away. It's such a cool experience to have. We don't think about it too much after stepping away for so long from something. Mm -hmm. When you come back, you almost not coming back with a vengeance, but you kind of are. Oh no, we're coming with a vengeance, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's what it looks like. And on top of that, you also have 15 years of just growth in life. Yep. And shit that's happened. And then on top of that, that professionalism that you had beforehand, you're double in age almost yeah. now. So you're sitting here and you can take all of those tools, the brand you guys got, like, you know, everything about it, like the music that's coming out, you know, the logo, everything is, it's, it's sick. And it's just like, it's going to catch and it's going to catch real fucking quick. So you guys are definitely going to be probably on some pretty gnarly tour cycles within the that's, year, I would hope. That's what we keep hearing, man. And like, I'm still like, to me, it's still just me doing music, you know? And the fact that one person, five people, 10 people, and to the point right now, like thousands of people are listening to this stuff is like, I just, it, it, it's awesome, man. Because like, the one thing that I, I've always felt truly been alive, like in life that, that I'm doing is music. So having the second chance, 100% coming back with a vengeance, man, because this is the last shot at it. You know, this is the last full on I can go. So I'm going to give it everything I got. And with BJ right there, help me. Like it's, it's gonna, like you said, it's going to hit. It's just, we're getting groundwork laid in now. You know, did you think you were ever going to play music again? No, honestly, I didn't even know if I was ever going to walk again. At one point I'm supposed to be crippled. And, uh, 
and going through that and and I went through a divorce and I went through some other kind of gnarly stuff through those couple of years like I music was the last thing you know but coming back to it in these last six months and the couple trials I did last year like it just reignited something to me man we're like I just got out of the studio today I just tracked a, another one of the songs I got all the main parts got a bunch of layer parts done but um, I got to finish up next week and do another song. And it's just like, I posted up a clip of it and it, uh, it's surreal to me. You know what I mean? It, like, I never thought I'd be doing this again. And here we are. And it's, and it's something that people are paying attention to. So that's pretty rad. I was going to say, so since it has been so long, like me, myself, I also went through a divorce, the, all that bullshit. And then like, kind of in a way like coming back to music myself especially like recording getting gear again it's been fucking great yeah. but one thing i've noticed it's just like what are your thoughts on like how the scene like has it changed are there things like very obvious to you that are different and are those changes like you have like positive thoughts or negative about either um so, I mean, being at the age I'm at now, man, this seems a lot different than when I was in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, everybody's a lot more, um, like welcoming. I feel like everybody's a lot more supportive or back in the day, it was kind of like you had your group that supported you, but like even just doing like watching these reaction videos now, like everybody in the scene is so inclusive and so supportive. It's cool to see that, you know, you could be a local band and Keem's doing a reaction video for you and you get. 500 likes on it because he put you out there like i think that's pretty cool to see there's so much access to so much music now but that is another issue is like the amount of saturation so like you definitely have to have something cool to stick out yeah i mean i can't imagine trying to start as a band from scratch now because i mean 2006 2007 2008 the internet was not what it is now you know Mm -hmm. and now you can post a song on soundcloud or whatever else what other sites they got and you could blow up overnight like that wasn't that wasn't around back then dude we were po- we were just talking about it the other day we were posting fucking flyers at stop and shop dude yeah for shows <laughs> yeah you know? like myspace was like eh. and you know mm-hmm. facebook didn't have the ability that it has now even just even just that platform yeah it's it's nuts and then on top of it you got all these other you know, social media apps that you can use and you could blow up overnight on a TikTok just because you put a vocal clip out. You know, it's, it's, it's gotta be a lot. I don't want to say easier because yeah, nothing, it's music different. is never easier, but it's right. different. Yeah. It's, it's easier to gain access yep. to what you want people to hear. But I feel like if you're not on a package or you're a band that knows other people and that has that networking, it's a lot harder to do shows because yes. we just recorded an episode with a dude from Waterbury and South street stage uh, about those venues. And there's no, like you can't play at VFWs or American legions anymore. Like that shit is just, if not rare or gone, at least from my experience in, you know, watching Connecticut right now, you know, it's, that's crazy, man. Even being in San Diego, like there's Soma, there's the yep. observatory, there's a brick by brick. So there's some really good venues here but you very rarely will see anybody doing like a VFW post because I think, I think everybody got, got word in the last 20 years that windows and ceiling tiles get broken. <laughs> well, this is, this is what's awesome. So our first show is October 1st coming up. Uh, Varials is headlining. Oh, hell, it's a VFW post, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Fuck and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me just eat my fucking words right there. <laughs> this dude, uh, this dude, Justin uh, from black path booking, man, he's killing it. He gets like really good tour packages he gets killer lineups and it's like Legion halls and sometimes like a little bit of a bigger venue, but like it's that old school, like we got a PA, we got a couple monitors and the rest is just going to be live. You better, you better pull it off. Right. Cause it's not going to be, you know what I mean? Yeah. You got to yeah, come with everything. Uh, yeah. You got to be fucking on in shows like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it should be pretty awesome. We're doing a, a live music video for the song. We just released a visual for the departed. And then um, we got plans for the actual music video later this year. So I'm just psyched, man. I've always wanted to do a music video. I never got the chance. And now we're going to be doing two this year. So that'll be really cool. It's going to be awesome. And then something that's like legitimately like your baby, 
you know, yep. it's something that you started from the ground up. Cause were you in any of the other bands? Did you start from the ground up or did you just come in? Um, on pass of torment, we started when I was okay, yeah. 16 and the rest of the guys were like, we were kids, man. We were all kids. Yeah. And I think when we recorded the album, I was 17 or 18. Uh, Dave and Adam were like 17, 16. And then Jesse, the drummer was like 15 or 16 on that album. It's incredible. Yeah, that's wild, man. You guys ripped. Like, I feel like we could have went so far if we had stayed together. Yeah, that band was very good. Yeah, those guys are crazy, man. Crazy musicians for just being the kids that we were. And uh, um, it's still on iTunes. Somebody put it on iTunes, and I was surprised to find it on there. But um, yeah, that was. I got like two regrets in music, so that was one of them. Not going forward, and then uh, I had come back from conducting. I had just got home when I was living out there in Connecticut and uh, burning the masses called me and said, Hey dude, we need a singer for a full European tour for a month. Are you down? And I turned it down. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like one of the biggest regrets, man. Cause like Europe back then for the, the metal scene was crazy from what I heard. So I wish I could have experienced that, but. Do you think it's coming back? Um... I, think it's, I think things are coming back. I think there's life in, in metal right now there's cycles of it for sure man like i um let me see like the newer bands i've been listening to i like falsifier a lot um decay is really good let's see levitated is another one that just came out that's like heavy as uh heavy as hell um i just got into sleep token that's that's a new one for me yeah uh definitely an interesting band yeah yeah they are yeah. it's a it's pretty cool man the whole thing they got going and and nobody knows who they are still. People are just guessing. Who, like, I remember when that was going on with Slipknot in, like, 99, 2000. Yeah, it's nice to see somebody out there still trying to have some mystique to their whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> so my friend Brian Hopkins, um, he's a really good friend of mine. He was on, like, Saved by the Bell back in the day, and he does music now. He does country music. But him and I are really good friends. He had me on his podcast. We were talking about it. He said that he had met Corey Taylor and they got the same producer, I believe. Right. So I said, if you ever get the chance, man, for me to meet him, like Corey from Slipknot, since I was like 12 years old, was like a huge influence in my voice too, you know? And, uh, he called me one day. He said, Hey bro, can you be over here? And I was like, yeah, why? What's up? He's like, Oh, there's a video shoot and uh, it's moonshine bandits. So I was like, all right, cool. I get down there and it's moonshine bandits and Corey Taylor's there. He had a <laughs> whole part on the song and he was filming the video. And like, sometimes they say meeting like your idols can be bad, but this dude was one of the most chill, coolest down to earth people I've ever met in my life, man. Uh, we sat, hung out for like three or four hours with him on set, watched him record, watched his wife do her part with the cherry bombs uh, thing she does. And it was like a really, really cool like scenario. We were talking about Ann Rice books and, and he's just like a normal dude, man. He took a bunch of pictures with us and, he was like, hey, if you guys are hungry, there's food, there's catering in the back. Like, not an ounce of rock star to that dude, man. Just all humble, cool as fuck. That's fucking awesome. That's great to hear. Yeah. Corey Taylor is definitely a ma major influence. I mean, I'm not a vocalist, but he's a major influence. And Slipknot, I mean, <laughs> Slipknot was probably one of the biggest influences. I mean, we're all, we're all pretty much the same age. So, like, yeah. when that stuff came out, I think it was, like, sixth grade when I got like the first year, like 99. Yeah, same like for me. The VHS, oh, the VHS as well. Too. Holy yeah, shit. To our neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Man. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, though, because sometimes you can meet somebody that's a rock star and they're uh, a dick. Yeah, so. that's for sure. But no, nah, man, he was he was cool as hell. And uh, like I, I got that. I got videos from it, pictures from it. And it was just like a really cool experience to like of all the people in the world that could have been an asshole and have that attitude. He didn't have it at all. It's good to hear. Yeah. It's awesome you got that experience, too. That's fucking sick. Yeah, it was really cool. I mean, and then, like, music-wise, man, like I said, bands, there's, there's so many new good bands, but I still love, like, Old White Chapel and, like, um, what's another one I've been listening to? Like, I Declare War. Jamie's one of my favorite mm. vocalists out there, man. Um, yeah. He's a friend of mine. And that dude, he's just a monster. And if you watch him live... He's got one of the craziest stage presences of like anybody I've seen in Deathcore. I haven't seen him in years. Oh man, 
they're still as good as they were 10, 12 years ago. Fuck yeah. And then uh, Ricky had me get on stage recently. That was pretty cool. Uh, I did a part of a song with him. And then uh, we got a couple guest spots coming on the EP. I got Nick from Molotov Solution. His part's already done. Tim oh, from The right. Ruins. Mm-hmm. Um, who else is here? Third person on here. I got some else in the works too, but um, it's pretty cool, man, because these are friends of mine. And being able to be like, hey, man, you guys want to be a part of this? And they're like, fuck yeah. Like, that's that's rad as hell to me because I'm still a fan of their music. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's it's a really, I don't know, man. It's just, it's surreal. Like, that's all I could say about it because, like, every time I think about it, I'm like, how am I even at this point? You know? Yeah, man. Like, y- I can just tell just from listening to you talking about all of this, like you have a lot of energy and passion about going into it. So I'm super fucking stoked for your future. <laughs> yeah. I hope it, I hope it explodes, man. And if it doesn't, I'm still having a blast doing it. You know, just the fact yeah, that I'm back in the yeah. studio, I'm making music. We're doing stuff I've never done before in music. Like I, I'm happy at that. If it takes off and it blows up cool, but if not, I'm still cool. You know? Yeah, you're back in it. I mean, that's yeah. that's the that's the biggest thing is, no matter what, you guys do a couple, couple Legion shows here and there, and that's it. I mean, I'm sure you, you guys are reaching for definitely reaching and have more more higher planned, but uh, I, I don't I don't see it, I don't see it being a, a uh, a quick trip. I think it's right. gonna be, I think it's gonna be a pretty good run. Yeah, no, for sure. Like Dan said, you sound excited, so we're excited. That's it's cool. It's funny, man, because like. You know, like, I didn't change as a person. I just got older, but I'm still that same kid, man, that, like, loves music. And, like, like I said, most of my, the people I look up to are friends of mine. And the fact that I'm able to have those friends in my life is even more exciting for me, you know? I can text, you know, Ricky and Nick any, like, late at night. I'm just sitting up, hey, man, check this out. And they'll be like, all right, cool. And they'll send it back and be like, all right, dude, why don't you change this, this, and this. And, like, having those um, support systems around me is huge for me, too, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, everybody around us is getting involved in music again. I don't know if it's just age. We just, we waited so long. We waited, everybody waited 10 fucking years and everybody's just like, ah, I I can't not do this anymore. Yeah. And then, uh, even just with the times, I mean, every, we had a crazy couple of years and I think everybody had a, the itch to, to get out and, and do it again. Cause like you said, this is like your last ditch. Yeah. If it works out for five years, awesome. If it works oh, yeah. out for the next 10, even better. But if it only works out for two and then 12 years later, you're sitting there talking about it again. You're like, Dad, I'm going to be like pushing I'm, you know, 12 years. I'm be, I'll be my 50s, dude. Yeah, it like, would be old. So like, uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, there's dudes that are that age that are still ripping and killing it and, and enjoying it. They yep. might not have the, uh, might not be doing all the same stuff they did in their 20s and 30s, but... You know, there's still doing it. I think it's sick. It's awesome to see everybody. There's people in all of my old bands that are just like, yeah, we started a band and they're now they're playing shows. Like, I think you talked to John yep. not too long ago. Yeah. And they just played the Webster Underground the other day. So what was that? Was that the um, Signs of the Swarm? Oh, no, it was with the uh, Orthodox. With the, with the Orthodox. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. They just played out here too. There's a man. There's so many crazy shows that come through here. And like, like I said, uh, Black Path is the dude that's handling all of it, and there's like one other production company, and they get like the kind of bigger venues. But um, I just saw Enterprise Earth with that new band with the dude from the Faceless. Oh fuck! I forgot the name of it. Uh, that show was pretty good, and then um, I just went to. I always fuck the name up, man. It's Sanguis Sanguisabag. Oh, I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And it's yeah. got the heart. But like Vomit Fourth played, they I think they opened. That band's really good, man. Um, it's got that old deathcore style to it a little bit. And like when BJ and I started this, we're like, let's make music that we would have wanted to listen to when deathcore first came out. Oh, yeah. So like Fuck everything yeah. we're writing, man, is with that mindset. Like, let's make an album that we would have listened to 10, 15, you know, 18 years ago when the stuff first came out, started hitting the scene. And you were a part of that scene when it happened. So this is like a second take on it after watching it evolve. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's you guys. I mean, 
sky's the limit with that shit dude just honing in like the <laughs> yeah. current like tricks but like putting it through your lens that's gonna be fucking awesome yeah and like i mean a lot of people sounded like man but like i've kind of always had my own voice and it always kind of stands apart like yeah you could find similarities and everything but um i think the closest back then was like phil phil and i were pretty much head to head when uh, even live, you could hear it live, like we were really close in the way our voices were. Yeah, you guys are beasts. And they evolved <laughs> too, man. Kind of have that same they timbre did. register. Yeah, yeah. And like the track I just did, um, man, recording now too, like like we were saying earlier, it's a whole different thing. Like you're pretty much voice acting. You go into the studio and you voice act. You like, you got to walk your voice through each line without blowing it out. But today I was like, fuck it, man. I just went for all power and like projection and you can hear the difference from the last two tracks of this track that it's just way more, way more grit to it and way more like just backbone to it than I have, I've had before. So Fuck uh, yeah. each time I get in the studio, no, never more recordings, Josh Bearden, um, this dude's helped me go to a whole new level uh, vocally too, just as a producer. Like if I do a line and it doesn't sound right, he's like, all right, man, run it back, try it this way. And then we'll keep knocking them out. And uh, I'm planning on sticking with him for the rest of this EP in the in the next the next uh, full length too. It should sounds good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything a lot of stuff, man. Has been great. He did uh, he did the mix and master in the last track. He did my vocals. Um, this time, without saying too much, there's other things involved that are directing us towards a certain way, but I'm sticking with all the vocal tracking and engineering is going to be with Josh. He kills it, man. So like, I'm going to keep that loyalty to him and just keep leveling it up every time I get in the studio with him, you know? Yeah. It's awesome to have somebody to push you like that. That's behind the computer. Yep. You know, when, when the producer cares about the product, it's going to be ever more better. For sure. And it makes and you better. He did uh he did, I believe he did one of the new Traders tracks, the one they just released. Oh, rad. He had something to do with that. I'm pretty sure it's mixing, mastering. Um, don't quote me on that, but he definitely had something to do with it. Um, he's tracking the new Traders. He's done a lot of stuff, man. He's done a lot of the big vocals. He's done a lot of the bands out here in Vegas. Um, and he's younger. I think he's in his late 20s, but, man, the kid, he's a smart kid. He knows what's going on. He knows, He knows what works, what doesn't. And uh, he's got for like for sure a good career, of, you know, producing, mixing, mastering ahead of him. That's sick. Yeah, yep. we uh, actually have a recording of you from Forsaken or Forsaken the Sky, whichever, whenever the name changed, because it was right around when you were there. The one track uh, we did. Yeah, I still have it. <laughs> uh, so we did in that kid's yeah. garage, right? Yeah, yeah, but that kid now lives in LA and he's like the, he's a prodigy. Really? He's done like Blink-182 and just, he's just, what the hell? Dude, his resume is deep. Yeah. He, he's like, he's balling these days. <laughs> That's sick, man. Yeah. You, you wouldn't have thought that like, just, okay, we're in his garage in the middle of Connecticut somewhere. And now this dude's like living in Beverly Hills or something like that. And he's, uh, he's just, He's had some apprenticeships that he went through and uh, he's been out here. The last time I saw him was random. Uh, I saw him in Canoga park uh, okay. when Cameron was still in Legion and they were with uh, there was Legion and demolisher. And I think era tour. And it was like literally just a carpeted VFW. That's it. And uh, he walked straight up to me and he was like, Holy shit. And I was like, Holy shit. <laughs> You're like the top tier. Even, even then, like 10 years ago, he was like at, at that pinnacle, which is, is sick. It's, it's cool for him trying to, trying to get him on the horn, but it's awesome when you have somebody that's, that's pushing you, you know, I've gone to a few, there's some people that you've recorded with, especially, especially when we were younger, it was just like pay time. Yeah. The biggest, the biggest producer I ever worked with was Adam D on the uh, cage train track. That was sick, man. That was me. He's sick too. Keith Ligia, Mitch Suicide, uh, Nate Deadwater Drowning, uh, Phil from All the Remains, Vincent, of course, and I think there was one more person on there. My memory shot, dude, from the from both the accidents, like 
I can remember some stuff, but like my wife will tell you, dude, I'll tell her the same thing four or five times throughout the day and forget that I told her it. So my bad if I repeat my, myself on stuff in this. No, nah, you're degree. good, dude. We're just glad you're here, man. We're glad you're uh, two accidents and still, still kicking it with us, man. Because yeah, that's for sure. That's 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 a crazy experience. Uh, I want to ask because I know a little bit about it because you've talked about it with me, uh, yeah. off off air. But uh, what are some things that you're doing that's not music? Like you know, you live, you know, you're in Vegas, like yeah. Vegas has got to be a weird place to live. Um, yeah. It's got to be cool and and weird. Is there anything you do outside, like hobbies? Um, I got into tattooing the last year or so, a year and a half or so. Um, I was tattooing at a shop for a while, just basic stuff, but it's cool. I got, I got started with that. Uh, I've been piercing since 2007, so I went full on back into piercing because physically, man, I can't do physical labor ever again. It's been years, like. I'm only about 55, 60% healed from my injuries after six years. And I'm probably looking at another third operation on my hips to take out all the metal. Um, so I got back in at the heavy because it's the easiest thing for me to do, you know? Um, but yeah, Vegas is weird. It's getting really crowded. It's getting like overpopulated to the point where anytime you try to go anywhere, it's traffic. Um, I just want to get a cabin, man. And, disappear into the woods of Oregon somewhere. You know what I mean? Man, I feel that way all the time. Yeah. I, yeah this city sure. is this city is insanely big now from when I have lived out here for ten years and it has changed. I can imagine. Yeah. It's dramatically. Yeah, it's it's wild. Vegas is always interesting. Yeah, I mean it's kinda like I don't really go near the strip or Fremont Street unless I have to. So like Yeah. If you stay to the outskirts of it, it's not too bad, but all the tourist stuff, man, it's just it's a nightmare trying to get in and out of. Uh, the casinos are super swamped. You try to do anything. I, it's just not my vibe, you know what I mean? I don't party anymore like that. So other than that, man, I just ride. You know, I love riding out here. You could ride 20, You could ride all year round out here. It's good. It's awesome that you still be able to ride, dude. That's That's got to be. I mean, I, it's nowhere near I used to, but. You know, every hundred miles, I got to stop, get off the bike, walk around, yeah. chill out. My hips will start to lock up, and I just got to give it a break. But, but yeah, uh, just being able to do it still is for sure, for sure. What kind of bike are you running uh, currently? I just had, I just sold my 2016 Street Glide, but I had it all done up, and uh, I don't know, man. I keep, I always go back to the Dynas because I love my Dynas, but mm. it just they're not comfortable. They're not like a, it's not a distance bike. So it beats the shit out of me every time I ride them now. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I'll probably that. go back to uh, either road glide or street glide coming up for sure. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I mean, other than that, man, it's just I got remarried. Um, my wife is fucking rad. We've been together over four years, been married a year. And Congrats. Uh, yeah, thank you. She's my main support. You know, anytime I come up with something fucking wild, she's like, just do it, man. Go for it. She's super see, supportive. See, everybody listening, listen up. <laughs> that's that's the fucking way man that's how you make it work yeah yeah, yeah. i mean you got to communicate Support each other's dreams <laughs> yep 100 percent. and like the older i get like communication is important like i said man like sometimes i'm like that fucking fish on finding nemo where like i i repeat myself because the, the motorcycle accident I had really bad brain damage um uh, but uh and she she puts up with it she'll be like babe you've already told me this man how many more times are you gonna tell me today <laughs> hey, at least she's patient man but there's some days man she has to help me out of bed and she's i'm 5 11 to uh 210 right now 205 and she's five foot three you know 117 pounds and she'll have to pick me up out of bed because i can't get out of bed because my back <laughs> oh damn but yeah she's there for all of it man and uh coming back to the music she's like dude go for it I know how much this means to you. I know that this is probably your last chance to do it and do it right. So just go for it. What a fucking champ. Yeah. Did you guys meet through music or was it just random? So check this out. So she was in the same scene I was coming up. I've definitely played shows and she was there. I just didn't know who she was. So that's kind of trippy, you know? Yeah, that is that is trippy. <laughs> we ended up meeting on Tinder, actually. That's the fucking funny part. Is Even uh, more trippy. Yeah. So, like, I had just gotten, I had just put up with my ex wife 
And uh, I had it for like, I'm not even exaggerating, man. I had it for 10 minutes. And I get a message that says, you look like my kind of trouble. And then uh, <laughs> two days later, we hung out. And four days after that, or no, three days after that, I moved in. And we've been together, like I said, over four years and married over a year. <laughs> Wild. That's, That's got to awesome. be like the quickest Tinder success story. Fuck it. Ever, when you ever. know, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's it, man. I mean, of course, every relationship, you got your ups or downs, but it's just. Yeah, for sure. That's just growing pains. Yeah. It's all about how you manage it and how, how you work with each other and how you how you just communicate, man. That's it. Anything in life is just communication. Dude, I, I chilled out a lot. You know, like, I really don't party anymore. I really don't go out wild. I really don't get too crazy. Um, I got my cats. I love my fucking cats. Everybody makes fun of me. I got three of them. Hell yeah, me too, dude. I got I, I have four. It's all good. Yeah, I've got a cat. They're like big biker dude and his kitties. I'm like, I love my fucking cats. I made I've made a lot of friends out here, man. Uh, a lot of connections out here. Uh, like I said, Ricky's out here. All the Up Sulfur guys. Those guys have been some of the most supportive, like instant off the off the rip friends that have uh, supported this band since day one and supported everything I've done with it. You know, Chase Wilson. He's a fucking killer person. Um, he's going to be playing in our live lineup for the show. So um, we got Chase from Of Sulfur on bass. We got Jeremy from Molotov Solution playing drums. We got Matty Jans from, he did the first Of Sulfur album on guitar. And then Will from Cybercrime and Enterprise Earth playing guitar. And BJ's actually coming down from Spokane to play the show with us. Fuck yeah, that's solid. Yep. How did this whole project like come together? Like who messaged who and like, how did so, that all come about? BJ and I have a mutual friend and my friend was like, Hey man, um, uh, I know BJ, he did all the enterprise earth stuff. I said, bro, I fucking love enterprise earth, like patient zero and up to like Luciferius or some of my favorite albums of that time. And, uh, I was like, all right, cool. And, uh, BJ and I became friends and I was telling him about the tryouts I did. I did two tryouts for two separate bands. And he's like, listen, dude, if you keep getting dicked around on it, uh, we'll just ma- we'll just make a band, you know? And like, I was kind of like, all right, cool. And then uh, I waited. I did the last tryout last December. I waited like six months, man. Didn't hear anything. I don't think they still announced it, but um, I wasn't going to wait anymore. I was like, I don't got time like this, you know? So BJ and I started doing it. We got the first song going. And that dude, every single song he writes is like, better than the one before it (laughs) and we got six songs right now he's working on the seventh one and we got three with vocals and then three more in the works right now and it's just like i mean you you hear the music man it speaks for itself that dude's one of the best guitar players of this scene and he's created this like whole atmosphere to the band that it's got such a bigger sound than just the music itself. Like he creates this like ambiance and like atmosphere behind the music that adds tenfold to what we're doing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely like a really unique vibe going on, but all the arrangements like you were saying are fucking amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He just execute them, bro. He like, he'll be like, Hey man, I got another song and he'll send me it with guitars, rhythm leads, the bass done and the drums done. <laughs> Um, right now we got Hunter Spader. He's from Connecticut and, yep. uh, he does a lot of stuff. He helps us out a ton. And then we had Matt Coco was doing the drums and, um, he's in that band Euclid too out there. I think that's how you say it, right? Euclid? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> but he's a killer drummer, man. He's, he's really, really freaking good. He was in like Oceano and Shadow of the Tent. Hell yeah. That's sick. Dude, all heavy hitters, man. Yeah, yeah. for sure. When I first saw it, and I was like, I was like, I was like, yo, is that is that is that Lou? And <laughs> and I saw it before before I even got back on hold with you. I, I saw it, and I was like, what the? F-? And I was like, no way. Yeah. I saw it, saw some of the, the the folks in the band as well with you, and I'm just like, dude, like this this past two years has been this scenes like I know there's been breakups with certain bands, but like super groups just getting together. And it's like yeah. all these heavy hitters from 10 years ago, 15 years ago, some 20 years ago, some of these guys. Yep. And it's just mixing with the new sound. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't wait to see where it goes, man. I, uh, every day I wake up, you know, like I'll sit and 
and hear the new track and play it over 50 million times till I get my patterns and my lyrics in place. And it's just like every single step forward makes me that more excited to what the future is going to bring. Like once October comes and we can make the announcements we got, it's, it's going to the next level for sure. That's awesome. And you're getting what, like pretty much full mastered mixes. Oh yeah. We're getting full mix and masters. Yeah. We're our own budget, man. We're our own backing. So BJ and I front everything. Um, we do all the recording costs, all the reaction video, like all that stuff we've, we've had done, like all the mixing, mastering, all that stuff. We That's that's us, man, because we know where we want it to go. And if you don't invest in yourself, man, nobody else is going to invest in you, you know? 100%. True. So it's going to be really cool getting that, having backing on another level to where we could take this to the, to the professional music video, to the full on next step for the album, you know? Yeah, and it's yours. Yeah, I mean, 100%. This, is, this is from the ground up. Me and BJ uh, created right. this band, you know, and now we got people along for the ride. So, uh, oh, yeah, get ready. There's going to be more. It's on the <laughs> way, man. <laughs> I just finished uh, the third song today. Like I said, I got to go back next week, do another track, finish this one up because I laid all my mains. There's like a science to recording now, dude. Um, I went in did a couple tryouts and I was like, I got this and I got fucking super cocky and I blew my voice out on one of the sessions. Mm. And I'm like, that's why I said going circling back to the, it's literally voice acting, dude. You got to stand in that fucking behind that microphone and create this, you know, this sound and this whole fucking monster that's coming out of you that normally doesn't come out of you, you know? Absolutely. We're proud. It's I'm, <laughs> I'm stoked. I'm, I'm excited to see what happens with it. Uh, is there anything that you can plug that's before October? I'll let everybody know where the, that show is going to be. And- yeah. So October 1st, American Legion, uh, post eight in Vegas, it's going to be Varials headlining, uh, local band, Roman candle us. And then there's a opener on that too, but it's going to be our live music videos on that. Um, we already got the two tracks out awakening official for the departed has a full lyric video on YouTube. If you want to check that out. Um, Carl Mad Graphics did that for us, and he 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 executed a killer man. Like I don't know if you've seen the lyric video, but it's pretty rad. He did a really good job with it. I have, yeah, I just watched it. If uh, awesome. visualizers, lyric videos, that dude does really good work, and and he's really affordable. So if you know anybody or you guys are looking for it, definitely go through him and have him do Sick. some work for you. But other than that, man, I got a couple guest spots coming up. Uh, one I can't say. The other one. Uh, I'll wait on that one too. I'll just be a, let it be a surprise. But <laughs> Fair. Um, that's, yeah, that's it, man. That's rad. You guys have a store up right now, and we got a full store. It's tight. Hats, stickers, shirts, hoodies. Um, we got a brand new design posted. I'm just waiting for the actual thing so we can put it in the store. That'll be available soon. And then, um, yeah, we're just going to be building, building, building until October. And October is going to be the first out the gate live experience to get with this. You know, awesome. Lou, it was awesome talking to you, man. Uh, definitely hope to talk pretty soon. I think I'll be in Vegas in October. So yeah, um, hopefully we'll be, be able to get together and say what up. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Thank you guys for having me on here. Yeah, yeah, for sure, dude. It was a pleasure to have you on. It was great shooting the shit and just getting caught up and uh, learning about what's been going on. I appreciate it, man. I'll talk to you guys very soon and uh, be safe out there. You as well, sir. All right. Take care, guys. Thanks again for tuning in for another episode of Tales from the Soundcheck Podcast. Follow us on Instagram at Tales from the Soundcheck Podcast and listen on Spotify where you can follow and rate the show. Don't forget to hit that little bell and subscribe to our YouTube channel for full episodes and future exclusive clips. If you have any comments, want to chat with us on the show, or have your band featured, please DM us or email us at Tales from the Soundcheck Podcast at gmail.com.